Uh, this gentleman that we're about to talk to is a great dad. He's a hell of a dude. You watch him on Fox 5, and uh, I'll tell you what, a shock, as we got word today, DJ Shockley joining us here on Sports Radio 92.9 The Game, that, that Matt Ryan is going into the broadcast business. I'm just curious, man, because, like, I watch you. You're flawless. You do a great job. Smooth. But you know this is this is work, dude. Like, what do you think about Matt going into the broadcast field? What up, fellas? Uh, good to be on with you. I get to holler at my dudes in a minute, but always checking in with you. But you know what, man? I think it's cool, man. I think I've been around Matt long enough to know that this dude will prepare like he does for everything else. And that's what he's getting ready for. Interview. There have been times, I remember when he was about to, when he made the decision that, you know, he was going to leave and, you know, he was going, you know, elsewhere. He wasn't staying with the Falcons. And I did a sit down with him. And he was so prepared with everything that he knew that possibly could come up. And this is the same thing he did when he played. I mean, I played, you know, three, four years with him. And I watched the dude prepare every single week like he was a seventh-round guy or like he was a free agent guy. He prepared. He was probably the most prepared guy going into a ball game. And that's why I think he was so successful when he played. But I think this is just another thing that gives him – something to stay connected to the game, but also where he can talk about it. And Matt's an intelligent guy, man. You don't play this long in the league and play at the level that he played at, and I had a success he had to not be intelligent, to know everything that's going on around you. And trust me, my dude knows everything going on inside of a ball game. I think he'll be he'll be spot on with that. He'll crush that just like he's done everything else. And uh, not much really rattles Matt. I think he'll be calm and cool on, on camera and on TV. So I expect him to, to crush it like he's done everything else. But you know how it is these way these days, shock. It's more style over substance. It's not going to go. This guy's a bum. <laughs> <You know? laughs> yeah, he ain't gonna do that. Yeah, we know he ain't gonna do that. <laughs> my dog, my dog, my, my dog, my dog Ice ain't gonna do that because he's still. You know, obviously he played a long time. Know a lot of these dudes, and that's right. you know what. That's the hardest part about this is it I is. remember when I was coming into this business of being very critical of guys, but I learned over the years that long as you can back it up, long as you can show and talk and explain it in a way that, okay, this guy watches it and he hears me talk about him in a negative light. Well, he can't say, well, Shock didn't do his, he didn't do his homework or he doesn't know what he's talking about. And I think Matt's going to go with that same kind of, kind of attitude of, yeah, I have to be critical because if you're not critical, then guess what? Nobody's really going to give you, you know, the, the, the kind of um to say, all right, this guy is something I want to, or somebody I want to want to watch. So I think he's going to be critical, but I, I don't think Matt's going to be the dude that's going to be like, hey, yo, bro, it's terrible. <laughs> <laughs> it is tough. Shock, it is. As a player, not not being a former player is a totally different deal. It's DJ Shockley yeah, no joining us. Uh, watch him on Fox 5, guys, and uh, here's the deal. We're talking Falcons. Let's stay in this this realm right here real quick because rookie camp came and went. I'm curious to know what you think about what you've seen thus far, what you're hearing. Obviously, you know, you're in uh, a lot closer than a lot of people. I like the rookie class shock, but I got to wait to see how things are going to look. But I think they're going to look completely different on offense with what we've got with Bijan and Matt Bergeron and these guys. Yeah, no doubt about that. I think the number one thing when you think about this rookie class and you look at it in the uh, totality is that, all these guys played a lot of football. All these guys, I think maybe four out of five of the guys were like captains of their team. Mm. Uh, they were guys that were dependable. They were around. They did uh, the most for uh, that particular program. And they're good, solid dudes. And I, the more, you know, background I did on while you, you know, watching these guys get drafted and then you, you kind of go back and see what they did over their career or you look at some of the things that people said about them. All these guys are the guys that you want to be able to come into your locker room and be able to to adjust to the type of people that's in there already and be able to adapt to it. And I think that's what you get. And I think you solidified a lot of spots that you needed to. You got depth for a lot of spots you needed to, but you also added some impact players. And, of course, uh, everybody's talking about Bijan, who's obviously going to be a big part of what they want to do. And when I think about Bijan, I tell you this, I would compare him to a Michael Parsons on the defense side of the ball. And I say that for this. Mm. Now, as a quarterback, if Michael Parson lines up at the defensive end spot, I know exactly where he is. I know that he's going to either drop or he's going to rush, and that makes it easier for me as a quarterback. But there's times when we start Dan Quinn, put him at linebacker. If he's a linebacker, guess what? He can go in the A-gap, B-gap. He can drop in the coverage. He can stand up. He can walk on the line. There's so many things that you can do with him that can really frustrate an offense, and that's why he is so good because he is very multiple. Bijan, I look at him in that same light. Now, if you put him in the backfield, yeah, 
inside, outside zone, catch out of the backfield. Yeah, those are the usual things. But you come to the line of scrimmage and he's out wide, he's in the slot, or he's coming in motion, and he can run every single round the route tree. That causes so many issues for a defense to have to worry about every single play. So now a defensive coordinator is guessing now that, okay, if he lines up out here, this is what we do. Okay, if he lines up in the backfield, but here's Kyle over here, here's Drake over here, here's big old Max Hollins over here, here's John Lewis Smith over here. There's so many things that Arthur Smith can do within his offense with Bijan, with all the other weapons that are around him. And then you solidify the front five guys up front, who obviously the four guys who play together. Now you bring in Bergeron to add to it. There's so many things I think Arthur Smith can do for this offense that's going to make it so hard on defenses to have to prepare for. And as a quarterback, all we want is one dude to be out of play. We want one or two dudes to not know exactly who they're covering or which gap they're supposed to be in or which coverage they're supposed to go to. And now we know we can win. And that adds to giving something to Desmond Ritter so that he has a pre snap read of, okay, I know where to go to football. I can tell who's misplaced. And it just gives him a little bit more confidence. And then you can turn around and hand it to Bijan or you can hand it to, you know, Tyler. You got so many things that you can do in this offense. And then, oh, yeah, Desmond can use his legs too if you need to. Mm. It is our man Shock, DJ Shock, the guy's former Bulldog and former Atlanta Falcon. Here's him on TV now, superstar. Like your studios, man, pretty fly. We were out there. It's a Shock with us here on the WaitForIt.com hotline. I know, man. You started a little room on me. You had the boys mad at me. Archie West is like, what's up? This is my, my place. I know. Mike Mike came to me. Shock. Mike was like, man, you see Shock Studios? I'm like, no. He, he goes, I just went in there and did a video. <laughs> and then, you know, and no good deed goes unpunished. I'm just having fun that Archie. I mean, West got in his bag a little bit. All hell broke loose. And I'm like, oh, I delete the damn. Oh. Oh, man, yeah, I know, it's what I do. I'm a, I'm a troublemaker. <laughs> so here's the deal. You kind of brought me to my next point. Arthur got real next level with the media, talking about 22 personnel, talking about the safeties and all the mismatches you can create. So, I mean, are we going to – how much pressure are they going to put Desmond Ritter in almost like a – like you're not going to be a mistake-proof zone, but are they going to basically put him in the best, best place to succeed? Oh, absolutely. And, I mean, you, you can talk about all the different personnel – that you can put into, but I think the number one thing is if you have certain personnel that you know you're going to get certain coverage or you're going to get certain guys in the lineup. Now, you look around the league, yeah, you got a couple guys on the outside who can cover and be, you know, lockdown guys. We look at A.J. Terrell say, okay, yeah, we can line him up versus anybody you feel good about it. But when you look around the league, you say, are there three, four, five guys that you can line up outside and say, all right, you go cover Kyle, you go cover Drake, you go cover Mac, you go cover – scouting in the slot, whatever it may be, you got so many guys that you have to worry about. And then, oh, here comes number seven at the backfield as well who can run routes just as good as those guys. It puts so much pressure on the defenders to be right. And in this offense, as a quarterback, you're looking for leverage. You're looking for, okay, this guy playing inside. Do I have a linebacker on Bijan? Do I have a safety coming down? Do safeties really feel good about playing man coverage versus – you know, somebody in the slot where you got a two-way go inside or outside, there's so many things that you look at. Linebackers, those guys, sometimes you know, okay, they're looking at me as a quarterback, I know his zone coverage. He's looking at me, he's not really worried about man, I know I can go with the football. There's so many things that's going to allow Desmond to have a pre-snap read that helps him when it comes to ball snap that he knows where to go with the football. So it takes away a lot of the thinking for him. So I think if you do that, it takes away the pressure that you put on Desmond to have to be precise or be perfect because there's going to be so many mm. options for him to choose from that it's going to be hard for him to be wrong. Because guess what? All these dudes are dogs. All these guys want to win. They're going to find a way to get open. They're going to find a way to make plays. And that's going to take a lot of pressure out there. 